Now, Tableau is known to create interactive visualizations that are customized for the target demographic. And what better way to learn it than a step-by-step -step tutorial? Hi all, this is Upasna from Edureka, and today we're going to talk about charts in Tableau. But first, let me show you the topics I'm going to cover for today. First of all, we're going to talk about the generated fields in Tableau, followed by the used cases of those. Then we're going to talk a little bit about building charts in Tableau, which is the major focus of this session. Then we're going to talk about the pros and cons of Tableau. And finally, we're going to conclude our session. So without much ado, let's get straight into the module. Now Tableau generates some fields which can be visible in the data pane. Now these fields are generated in addition to the fields that are present in the data set. Now the generated fields are measure names, measure values, the number of records, and latitude and longitude. Now, measure names and measure values are two fields created in Tableau by default. Now, these fields are created when a data set is imported into Tableau. So you can go into the data pane of the worksheet and view the fields, as I'm going to show you in a little while. A measure name consists of all names of a measure present in a data set and is always present at the end of the dimension. Whereas all the measure values present in a data set are kept together in the field called measure values. And it is also always present at the end of the measures list. It consists of all continuous values of all measures. And if we talk about number of records. For those of you who have worked with Excel sheets and Power BI before, your number of records is basically like a count variable. It shows the count of records present in a data set. It is also an auto-generated field in Tableau, which assigns the value of one for each record present in the data set. It can be used to verify the count of records when joining multiple tables as well. Apart from that, we have the latitude and longitude, which are basically associated with geographical detail present in a data. A data set should consist of geographical details like city, country, or state for this particular generated field to be used. All right. So let's see how we can use them. Now I'm going to be opening a new sheet in Tableau. All right, so let's see how measure names and measure values work first. So I'm going to pick up the highlighter to show you where you can find these. So here I have my highlighter. So here at the dimensions shelf, you can find the measure names. And here are the measures shelf. You can find the measure values. All right. Now, in the first case, we're going to be using measure names and measure values, which can be used to see the aggregation of all measures present in a data set. Now, these fields can be shown as different types of visualization in Tableau as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to drag the measure names into the columns and drag the measure values into the rows. All right. Now, if we turn the marks shelf into automatic, Tableau automatically gives us a bar chart. And if not, you can go into the marks card and select a bar chart. Now, this visual is created for all measures present in the data set. As you can see, we have discount, number of records, profit, profit ratio, quantity, and sales. Same thing we can see here. All right. Here we can see all the measure names and measure values. Moving on. Now, you can do a bunch of things with this particular measure. For example, if you suppose want to delete a measure value, you have the option right here. I don't want to delete any. And also you can create an alias for measure names. It can be shown in the visualization for better identification. So if we go to measure names, there's an option known as edit alias. I'm going to select that. And in this example, I am going to give the quantity volume sales. And then click on OK. And as you can see, the name has changed right here in your graph. And these are just a few basic things that you can do with this. If you want to analyze multiple measures in a single visual, this can also be done using measure names and measure values. All right. With that, let's go to our other generated fields. I'm going to create a new sheet for this. New worksheet. And we're going to talk about the number of records. So again, for this, I'm going to drag the number of records from the measures pane up to rows. And this basically gives us the number of records, which is 9994. Pretty basic. There's nothing much you can do about it. But when we are going to aggregate on the bigger numbers in the bigger data set, 
This is something which will be very useful to us. All right, let's add another sheet and we're going to see how we can use the latitude and the longitude. Now, as I had mentioned before, these fields are associated with geographical detail present in the data. So you should have something like a city, country or state in your data set so that you can use them. Now, unlike other BI tools like Power BI, where sometimes you have to mention that a latitude or a longitude is in fact geographical data, here Tableau is smart enough to auto generate these measures. So I'm going to take the latitude here and the longitude here. Okay, let's just switch it up. Let's put the latitude here and the longitude here. And you can already see a map appearing. Our second step will be to drag the state from the dimensions and put it on this detail present in the marks card list. And this creates a geo mapping visual as you can see on your screens right now. You do not have to select any visualizations just by dragging and dropping your latitude and longitudes. Tableau is smart enough to understand that it has to create a map. Now that was all about generated fields with that. Let's move on to understanding how and when to build different types of visuals. Now Tableau is known to create interactive visuals for easy data interpretation. So you can create various types of graphs in Tableau based on the purpose. Now the different charts that can be created using Tableau and their specific purposes is something that I'm going to show in the next segment of this session. So we're going to start with the bar chart. Let's go back to our Tableau desktop, create a new sheet for this and name it bar chart. Pretty basic. Now this is one of the very basic charts. All you have to do is take something on your X axis and take something on your Y axis. And by default, it is going to be made into a bar chart using Tableau. So I'm going to take category of product in my columns and I'm going to take, say, the profit into the rows. And as you can see, the automatic feature will turn it into a bar graph. And if it doesn't, you can just go to the marks card and select bar graph. All right. The next basic chart we're going to see is the line chart. Again, I'm going to name this sheet. It's always good to be organized because in the end, we are going to use BI tools for organization and analytics, right? So here's my line chart. So a line chart basically is used to compare the data over different periods. A line chart is created by basically connecting a series of dots. Now these dots represent the measured value in each specific period. So again, this is pretty simple. I'm going to take the order date as I just mentioned. It shows data for a fixed period of time. So I'm going to take the order date in the columns and I'll be taking sales this time as my measure and it automatically creates a line graph. Now Tableau is smart enough to figure out what kind of graph would you need for certain data. But even if it does not, you can always go into the marks card and select the kind of graph you want. Next is a kind of complicated graph, which is the Pareto chart. This is basically a combination of both the charts that I just showed. So Pareto chart consists of both bar and line graph. The same measure is used to create the graphs, but the measure values are manipulated differently. Now the purpose of using a Pareto chart in Tableau is to identify the contribution of members that are present in a particular field. For example, the profit contributed by different subcategories of a product in a retail store can be analyzed using a Pareto chart. It can be used to show the top members and their contribution as well. So let's try doing that. I am going to be taking the subcategory of products, putting it in my columns. Then I'm going to take profit and put in my rows. Now stay with me because this is kind of a longer process than the other graphs, but it's pretty useful. I assure you. Now I'm going to right click the subcategory and select the sort option. It is going to open this sort of a window. I'm going to select the descending order and then I'm going to go to the fields and my field name is profit aggregation sum. Okay. Then I am going to drag the profit measure again into the rows. It's going to create two separate graphs like this. 
but if i right click here you can see an option called dual axis i'm going to select this and it's going to turn this into circles it's basically merged the x-axis of both the measures and has converted it into the visualization that you can see right now now next you have to go to the marks card and select some profit and as the drop down appears going to select bar here and i'm going to go for the color a lighter blue okay now i'm going to the other profit and i'm going to select the line graph here and i'm going to go for the color orange okay maybe a darker orange all right this looks better now i'm going to select the sum of profit and the second one right here and i'm going to right click here and choose add table calculation from the list now it opens this primary calculation type of a window i'm going to select running total from the calculation type because that's what we want right we want a running total and then select sum as the aggregation which is already selected and compute using table across all right now i'm going to add a secondary calculation and this is for our second graph and here i'm going to select percent of total all right table across as we have done before now i'm going to be closing this window as you can see the line graph has changed and it's not on top of the bar graph anymore that is because we have separate primary and secondary calculations the line graph here is showing us the total running sum of profit as we had calculated and as you can see here and now you can basically select and change colors that you want to make the graph look as you like i'm going to keep it as it is and this is the procedure to create a pareto chart in tableau next in our list we have a bullet chart i'm going to rename it now bullet chart can be used as a gauge or an indicator to show the performance of measures now two measures can be compared to each other using the bullet chart for example if you are having to estimate say actual profit versus estimated profit we can compare both of them using the bullet chart now this is going to be slightly different from the three charts that i showed before here we are going to start with the analysis option present in the menu bar all right select create calculated fields it opens this sort of a field window and i'm going to just name it as estimated profit we are going to type an estimated value in this example the profit is taken as the measure so the calculated field is created for estimated profit so i'm just going to type in a number let's just keep a 300000 now the good part about tableau is that till your expression is valid it is not going to let you apply the changes you have made in a calculated field which is great for beginners because then you will know exactly where you have gone wrong for example if i remove this you can see the field shows that the calculation contains errors not just that it will even show you the syntax of what your expression should be so here when i type a number it shows that my calculation is valid and i can apply this and there you are now go to the measures in the data pane and you have to hold the control key on the keyboard because you have to select two different measures so estimated profit and profit now click on this option called show me which will show you the various graphs that you can apply here top right corner this is the option this is the option i'm talking about and you can see the bullet chart option also being highlighted which means we can use this particular option for the measures that we have input so i'm going to select this and you have your bullet chart next in our list we have text tables so let's just add another sheet going to a new worksheet going to do the same thing so a lot of this is going to be dragging dimensions and measures and dropping them into columns and rows don't mind me not repeating it again and again so after we've gotten a table like this i'm going to drag this profit into the text box present at the marks card and here you have it it creates a text table by default next up we have a heat map 
Now, this is basically a graph which can visualize the data in the form of size as well as colors on different measures. Now, two different measures can be visualized simultaneously using a heat map. So, one measure can be assigned to size, whereas another measure can be assigned to the color of the heat map. So, let's go ahead and create one. Now, again, I'm going to be holding the control key on the keyboard and select subcategory and sales from the data pane. So, let me just select these two. I'm going to go back to the show me button on the top right corner of the worksheet and select the heat map. And it's going to look something like this. It does not have any color now. I'm going to take this profit measure and drag and drop it in the color. And now I'm going to drag, let's say, region. Where did the region go? Yeah, all right. I'm going to drag the region and put it in the columns. And now this has created a heat map which can be used to visualize sales and profit across different dimensions in different regions. Next, I'm going to show you how to make a waterfall chart which is also one of those charts which requires a little more work than the others. So let's see how it's made. Oh my God, we've got like 13 sheets right here. Let's rename this. All right. Now, waterfall chart is a chart that visualizes the cumulative effect of a measure over a dimension. It basically shows the contribution of growth or decline by each member of a dimension. Now, let's take for example, you can see the contribution of profit by each subcategory by using a waterfall chart. All right, so we'll start by making a basic bar chart. So we go to a new worksheet. What we had done for the bar chart thing, take the subcategory, put it on the columns, take profit and put it in the rows. By default, it creates a bar chart, as I had mentioned earlier in this session. Now I'm going to right click on the profit present in the measures pane and I'm going to choose create and then go to the calculated field option which opens up a window like this. Now you're going to take this and do exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to name this negative of profit and I'm going to put a negative sign right here. I'm going to apply this. Now we're going to use this newly created calculated field negative of profit into the size option present in the marks card. Let's just drag and drop it. Now it shall give you a graph like this, after which you need to click on this sum of profit present in the rows and select quick table calculation and take a running total option. Now the reason why we're taking this negative ad hoc calculation is to fill in the gaps in our bars when we are going to turn it into a Gantt chart. So basically we're going to turn it into a Gantt chart right now in the marks card. And now this will create a waterfall chart as you can see on your screens. Now talking about the Gantt chart, let's see how we can create a separate Gantt chart. Now a Gantt chart is the one which shows comparison between data in different categories. So it's basically used to identify the time taken for each process. So let's try to make one. Now we're gonna take the drop down button in the marks card and select Gantt bar from the list. Now we're going to drag order date and put it in our columns and then right click on it and select day. Now let's click on analysis on the menu bar and create calculated field like we had done earlier in the session. I'm sure all of you might be familiar with this window right here. We're going to type time for shipment and we're going to use this formula called date difference. Now, as most of you might have noticed before, shows the syntax right here. We're going to put in a date part, a start date, an end date, and start of the week. So I'm going to put the date part as day in single quotes, comma, in square brackets, order date, which is a dimension, so it appears automatically. Next, I'm going to have ship date. Now the last start of the week you may or may not put because now that is an optional part of the syntax. So I'm going to choose to not put it and I'm going to apply it as is. Now I'm going to drag this time for shipment into the size part and I'm going to take ship mode and put it up in rows. And now this has created a Gantt chart. It shows the time taken for each shipment across different ship modes. All right, now let's go back to something a little more old school presenting the pie chart. Now a pie chart is something as most of you might be knowing. It basically shows segment wise data. 
It can show the contribution of measure over different members in a dimension and the angle of the pi determines the measured value. And basically, it's one of the most colorful charts. Different colors can be assigned to the pi to represent different members in a dimension. Now we're going to do this on a fresh worksheet. Not going to spend too much time here. We're going to just select segment and sales from the data pane and then go to the show me button and select the pie chart. And there you have it. Pretty simple. Let's move on to another very useful chart, which is a scatter plot. Now, the relationship between two measures can be visualized using this particular plot. A scatter plot is designed by adding measures in both X and Y axes. This basically shows the trend or the relationship between the measures that you select. Now we're going to try doing that. We're going to drag discount into columns. Here's the discount, put it in the columns. I will take sales and put it in the rows. Now, this basically creates a scatter plot by default, as you can see. Now, I'll be taking the subcategory into the color icon and dropping it right there. Now, this basically has created a scatter plot showing the relationship between the discount and the sales for each subcategory. As you can see, multiple bubbles. With that, let's move on to the area chart. Now, an area chart can represent any quantitative data over a different period of time. It's basically like a line graph where the area between the line and the axis is generally filled with color. Now, we're going to hold the control key in the keyboard and select order date and quantity. Next, we're going to click on the show me bar right here and select the area chart icon. Now, we're going to drag the region from the dimensions pane so that you can add it in the color icon here in the area tab and this creates an area chart as you can see pretty simple with that let's move on to another very basic chart called a dual axis chart it's basically a chart which can be used to visualize two different measures in two different chart types a date column and two measures are kind of a basic necessity to build a dual axis chart the different scales in this chart help the user to understand both measures. So again, I'm going to hold on to the control key and select order, date, sales and quantity. So order, date, sales and quantity. In the show me tab, I'm going to select the dual combination and this creates a dual axis chart. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Now you can change the color, do anything you want with this chart. Me personally, I would like to keep it as is. I think blue and orange create a very good contrast, which makes your data visible and clear. Next and the penultimate chart I'm going to talk about is the bubble chart. Now a bubble chart visualizes the measures and dimensions in the form of bubbles. It's kind of like the scatter plot, but it contributes to a more effective visualization. It's as simple as that. All I had to do is click on the packed bubbles option and it has created a bubble chart as you can see. And finally, we have a very important chart, but also a very basic chart, which is a histogram. Now a histogram shows the values present in a measure and its frequency. It basically shows the distribution of numerical data as it shows both frequency and measure value by default. It can be used in many cases. For example, if you want to analyze the discount given by a retail shop, you can visualize the amount of discount and its frequency using a histogram. So we're going to go to a new worksheet, select discount from the measures and click on show me. And this is the histogram option. And this is our histogram. It was as simple as that. With that, I've come to the end of all the charts that I had to show. Let's move on to the features of Tableau. Now, as discussed before, Tableau is one of the most comprehensive business intelligence tools in the market right now. Since its inception, it has already witnessed a steady growth and has gained a wide market share in the BI and analytics space. So it's clearly one of the top choices in the BI space. So let's talk about a few features which has made it gain its wide market share in BI and analytics space. So first of all, it's amazing data visualization. 
Tableau BI is known to offer the most advanced data visualization options and is definitely a market leader. The users can easily perform complex data visualizations by using the drag and drop feature and it has a slick interface which is both intuitive and fast for creating customized visualization. It is easy for any business user to create customized dashboards using the complex data and sources which makes Tableau a preferred choice for business users. We have quality customer support and since Tableau is a fast growing company with very high customer retention ratio, most of Tableau BI users are satisfied with the product and the technical support provided. According to a survey conducted by Gartner, Tableau is ranked amongst the best BI tool with respect to customer satisfaction. Next up and very important, it is very easy to implement. Tableau though rich in features is easy to deploy and upgrade. As per survey conducted, more than 90% of Tableau users have the latest version installed and running it clearly indicates the ease of use and upgrade. Next, we have data source integration. Now, Tableau offers a simple out-of-the-box solution for integrating with the most popular data sources and analytics languages like R and Python. They're also constantly adding support for new data sources as and when the need emerges. It also supports Hadoop and Google BigQuery API for robust data analytics. Next, let's talk a little bit about its excellent mobile support. Tableau has clearly understood the requirements of mobile users and has developed a robust mobile app, which has a very rich user interface. It is a challenging task to showcase complex graphs and visualizations on a small mobile screen, but Tableau has mastered this art and the visualizations adjust itself based on the screen size of the device which is being used. And finally, let's talk about the rich online resources and community. Now Tableau has got an active and engaging user community which will help the fellow users to learn and master Tableau. Now the community is so huge and is so always buzzing with ideas and solutions that it has a vast vendor base who also offer installation and customization services. Concluding, I would like to say that Tableau is a BI tool which is changing the way we think about data. It helps you harness the power of your data and unleash the potential of it. So it is definitely one of the best BI platforms to choose. Thank you and have a great day ahead. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!